This related rates problem is a little bit tricky to visualize, or at least it was for me. We have a light source and it's rotating. So I'm highlighting the right light source in a highlighter. It doesn't matter which way it's rotating. And I'm just gonna pick the regular, uh, the positive rotation for trigonometry angles. And that means this angle will be theta. And you can think of this as a, an emergency vehicle rotating light shining on a wall if you're looking at it from above. And so the light will basically be rotating around like that. Of course, it's not, it, it's on a flat wall, so the light will be rotating uh, that direction or the other direction, it doesn't matter. One would be positive, the other would be negative, but we're gonna choose the positive version for our answer here. All right, 10 feet from the wall, so that is constant, that distance 10. One rotation every three seconds. So this is, one rotation every three seconds is a rate or a speed of rotation. That's telling us how theta is changing. So let's highlight that, the light completes one rotation every three seconds. So that's d theta dt equals, now it's not just three, it's one rotation every three seconds. And I'm gonna use degrees. You can totally use radians if you want to, but you're gonna have to convert uh, everything to radians. So this problem is already in degrees by default. So one rotation, so here our units are rotation per second. We're doing one rotation every three seconds. Could have spaced that out a little less. We're not measuring in rotations, we're measuring in degrees. So that's 360 degrees per three seconds. And now our units are not rotations per second, they're degrees per second. All right, so that's d theta dt. And of course you can reduce this to 120. Oh, I've already messed up my units, that's why I never write units. If you're gonna write degree, divided by seconds, you don't need the degree symbol right next to 360. So 120 degrees per second. Okay, so that's d theta dt, also known as theta prime. We need to, and of course theta is 15 degrees. Uh, if I'm gonna use deg for degrees, I should be consistent and use that everywhere I'm using degrees. We need to relate theta and the, we need to find the rate at which the light projected onto the wall. So here's the point where it's projected onto the wall. If the light's rotating the way that I described it earlier, this point where it hitting the wall is gonna to move to the right. And I think it would be reasonable to call this distance right here, X, use whatever, you can call it Y, you can call it something else. I'm just gonna call it X. So I have two variables, theta and X, and I wanna relate them in an equation, and hopefully you can see the trick equation we need. We have an angle. We do not have the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is not here, so sine and cosine are out. We're gonna use tangent. Tangent theta, opposite over adjacent. So that means tan theta equals opposite is x, adjacent is 10. Fractions suck, let's multiply by 10. 10 tan theta equals x, there we go. If you remember the steps for related rates, basically it's relate your variables in an equation and then take a derivative. I like to know what I'm trying to find. And so let's look back at the problem, what we're trying to find, find the rate at which the light projected onto the wall is moving along the wall, blah, blah, blah. So we're trying to find how x is changing. Find dx over dt, aka x prime. All right, we know theta, we know theta prime. Uh, we can now take our derivative of the equation we wrote down, and we'll be solving for x prime. Let's go ahead, do a t derivative. Every related rates problem I give you should be a t derivative. So we have 10 constant, derivative tangent is secant squared theta. But remember, 
That's just the tangent function. Now the derivative of theta is theta prime. So it's times theta prime. And again, I wrapped the secant squared in parentheses because you need to make sure this is multiplied by theta prime. It would be really bad to if you made this mistake, putting theta prime inside of the input for the secant function. So don't do that. So I use the extra parentheses above. All right, so that takes care of the left side. The right side, derivative of x, x prime. There we go. It's already solved for what I'm trying to find. So I don't need to really do any algebra. I think I can just plug in values right now. Secant of 15 degrees. I'm writing the squared outside. I do not like to write secant squared like that whenever I can avoid it. So secant of 15 degrees and then square it times theta prime, which is somewhere 120. Again, I'm ignoring units. If you're a physics or chemistry major, you probably want to write down units. Uh, and they are all above. Uh, equals x prime. All right, so all we need is a calculator. And I have the Desmo scientific calculator right here. Oh, no. I was hoping I can get both on the screen. Guess not. All right, so look at what mode we're in. I did sine pi over 2. I was expecting to see 1. I didn't. If I'm in radian mode, I get 1. So I want sine of 90 to be 1. There we go. I am in degree mode because we know sine of 90 degrees is 1. So I'm in degree mode. That's important. And let's see if I can remember. It's 10 secant of 15 squared something else times 120. Uh-oh, what's wrong? I need to put an asterisk maybe. Secant, what's going on? Function. Do we not, all right, we don't have secant. So when you don't have secant, secant's one over cosine. So we'll go with cos. Oh, extra parentheses everywhere. All right, so it's one divot. Ah, oh, fun with calculators. Cut, paste, boom. That is not what I saw. Cos 15, we're in degree mode. All right, I'm worried because I have the answer right here. That's a lot of feet per second we just got. All right, where do we go wrong? Cos secant squared is cosine squared, cos 15 or degree mode. 